Greetings from Alliance Redwoods Conference Center in Sonoma County, California. You're here today with Emma, a naturalist with Alliance Redwoods Outdoor Education Program. Camp at Home is a video series that seeks to connect you with the amazing natural world through scientific observations. The investigative tools that we are demonstrating here are used by scientists all around the world to learn about the plants, animals, habitats, and climate in an area and learn how we can best care for them. So let's go out and do some exploring. Today I'm going to introduce to you the difference between native species, invasive species, and alien species. Think about the word native. What do you think it means and where have you heard of that word before? When a living thing is native, we mean that it comes from and is well adapted to an area that it is from. You might be considered a native to your town because you have lived there all your life and you know where everything you need is. Animals and plants have native areas too. Usually we consider the first known location that the organism is discovered to be its native habitat. We assume that it grows well there, knows how to get what it needs, and that other plants and animals are optimized to living with it, depending on it, or even competing with it. Now consider the word invasive. It sounds like an aggressive word, doesn't it? When someone says the word invader, you may think of armies sweeping in to take land and resources, or someone sneaking in to steal. That's actually a pretty good way to think of invasive species. They creep in at first, and then take over in a way, pushing out native plants and animals by taking the resources they need or outright killing them. Some invasive species can be native to a region, but not to a particular ecosystem. For example, a native bush may colonize into a grassland, shading out the plants and flowers there. If it had not historically been in that grassland or had previously had its growth suppressed by circumstances such as climate, fire, drought, flooding, or animals, it will not benefit or fit into the continuance of that native grassland community and could aggressively start taking over. Land restorers and managers identify what climate and physical circumstances that form a community when they are looking to maintain it and make sure to provide those circumstances when the community is sensitive, threatened, or endangered. However, we have noticed that no native species has caused the type of habitat destruction as alien invaders have. Okay, now the word alien might sound extraterrestrial to you, but it doesn't mean these species come from another planet. It just means they come from a different part of the world and didn't get here on their own. People sometimes purposely and sometimes unknowingly transport species from other countries to a place where they can become wildly destructive to native species living there. Look around your city. Do you see trees with names like Japanese maple or Chinese wisteria or Dutch elm? It's a good bet they didn't come from North America with those kinds of names. People plant them because they like the way they look, not because wildlife here depends on them. And sometimes plants like that escape and cause problems, even if they started out being an herb or flower in someone's garden. Seeds, diseases, bugs, and other small animals could also sneak in through imported goods or foods. Our government today tries very hard to prevent that because we have seen the damage that they do to crops and native ecosystems. Here is an example of something that invasive species does. You can see here that we have in the redwood forest all sorts of redwood sorrel and trillium native plants. And when I move over a little bit, you'll see that here is an English ivy. Now do you notice how when I get into the English ivy, how it is choked out pretty much all of the other plants. So the ivy has taken the resources and the space that the native plants need and has begun to take over. If this ivy is left to continue to move through the forest like this, it will take over all of the space from the native plants in the areas that it can 
be dominant. All right, now that you have some background into native, invasive, and alien species, let me show you what we can do about it. Today I'm going to focus on an invasive alien species in Northern California called French broom. French broom came from, well, guess where? It was brought as an ornamental species to make gardens pretty, but it is well suited to grow in our soils and climate here and prodigiously spread seeds. I mean, literally, a medium sized plant can make 8,000 seeds a year and explosively spread them up to 10 feet. The little seeds are further spread by animals, water, cars, and even ants. They normally live 15 years, but they have been known to live a quarter of a century. Think of how many seeds a plant like that could produce in that amount of time, or how much habitat it could take over if no one knows, cares, or pays attention. Let's go out and see what we can find. Oftentimes, invasive species get into a space when there's been some kind of disturbance in that space that allows their seedlings to start taking hold because the native plants have been removed. I'm going to show you right here an example of what I mean. Here you can see that I'm looking at a space that has native plants in it, all sorts of beautiful ferns you can see. You can see some sprouts of redwoods, um, some uh, different types of tan oaks and things like that. Now, just up the trail here, I've noticed that there's a space that a friend and I had pulled out some invasive species just a little while ago. So we're going to turn and take a look at how that space is different. A few steps up the trail, you can see right here, it looks like this space has maybe been disturbed. Now, my friend and I had come over here and we had seen that there was a lot of French broom. And we pulled that out about five weeks ago so that it couldn't get another foothold here. And maybe some of these small ferns that you can see might be able to um, grow back up and take over this space. I'm going to show you what French broom looks like. About a hundred yards away from where we just were, I noticed that there are some little French broom sprouts and some others that I would like to take care of. I'm going to show you what those look like right here. Here I can see the beginning of some French broom coming up. Now, French broom, some ways that you can identify, do you see that there are three little leaves that are coming together? I'm just going to go ahead and pull up these little sprouts so that they don't get a chance to get a foothold here. Now when I pull them up, you notice that I am trying to get the entire root so that they don't grow back. But these little sprouts are going to grow into amazingly large plants that are capable of taking over really large spaces. So we're gonna make sure that we get as many out in this area as we can, making sure I didn't miss any little guys. Now this is probably the source for the sprouts that I just saw. You notice that here we have some maturing French broom plants. Now I would say that this one's mature because you can see that it's starting to make flowers and I wanna get this out of here before those flowers can actually turn into seeds. Uh, because in that case, pulling them out isn't going to do anything. Those seeds will develop and they will just keep on spreading. So I need to get these plants um, out of the ground so that they die before those seeds can develop. Um, these aren't the biggest ones that I've seen around. I will actually show you some that um, their entire stem looks like a tree stem in a little bit once I get these out of the ground. Now one thing I like to do to be thorough is I will put all of my plants in one space when I'm pulling them out. Um, first of all, so I can see my progress. I'm getting all the roots. You can see over here is a pile from a few weeks ago that's all dried out and pretty much wilted. These guys are dying. Um, that helps me to see my progress of where I've pulled these guys out. Um, but especially it helps me to see that I didn't miss any little guys because these little sprouts are really easy to miss if I were to leave the branches just laying where I pulled them up. And I don't want to leave hundreds of little guys here and just pull up the big ones uh, because these little guys are gonna come back in a few years and be very large, um, depending on how fast this plant can grow and spread. Um, now these won't be mature enough to make flowers for maybe a year or two, 
but still my work would pretty much not be very productive if I leave these little guys behind. Now one of the things I want to mention too is safety. Um, I'm showing you that I have on gloves and I have on some sturdy shoes and um, some tough jeans and the reason I have that is that um, some of the plants that we're trying to protect are things that wildlife need. You can see that I've got a berry bush here that the foxes I know love and the birds love and um, you can see that there's some pretty gnarly thorns on there. And uh, so those thorns would be poking me all over the place if I didn't have these. Uh, the gloves protect my hands and I also recommend that um, you would have some kind of safety glasses on um, just so that the branches don't poke your eyes. This is just maybe two years old. And if you look at this guy right here, um, he is probably maybe 20 years old. Um, and you can see that there's a very, very thick stem over there. All right, I got some of these monster guys out of the ground so that they cannot plague our native plants anymore. I just want to share with you a few tactics that I find work for me. Um, when I'm trying to pull big guys out, I will wiggle them back and forth. When they're kind of big or just uh, in some hard soil, I will wrap them around my fingers on my gloves so I can get a better way of pulling them out. If I can do that again. So wrapping it around my glove, pulling, wrapping it around my glove, and pulling, and it works better with two hands, but I'm holding one hand with the phone. So otherwise you get things breaking off like that, which I don't want. I want them to come out by the roots. So I'm gonna put my phone down so that I can wrap around both my hands and give it a good pull. Um, I also sometimes find that leverage works. So if you put it um, at a 90 degree angle on your fingers, you're gonna get a better grip. Than if After watching what I did today, what did you notice? What did you wonder? And what kinds of things did my project remind you of? Do you have this plant growing in your home? Or do you have some species that look like they are taking over? Do your own research on the internet to see if you can answer some of the things you're wondering. If you should take some action in your own home area. As always, keep exploring. Bye for now from the naturalists at Alliance Redwoods. Come and see us again soon for another fun exploration video.